today's cook is the beautiful stroganoff one of the legendary beef dishes that is super simple to make particularly because we are using the slow cooker we're going to leave this cooking all day long so you end up with a pot of gold and i know you're going to love this so the shopping list is as follows the main ingredient is beef you're going to want some diced beef that is suitable for slow cooking some kind of casserole beef most of the supermarkets have loads of different options okay we're going to also need some mushrooms any mushrooms that you prefer i've gone for the baby white we're going to want an onion a whole onion here you're going to want some tomato puree and some stock. I've just gone for a stock cube. This time it is of the beef variety. You want some Dijon mustard, some Worcestershire sauce. It's going to give loads of flavor. You're going to want that sour cream, garlic, salt and pepper, corn flour, and some parsley that we're going to throw in right towards the end. So let's cook. The first thing we want to do is start making our stock and I'm going to do this by using two tablespoons of tomato puree, around 400 mils of boiling water so that we can mix up that tomato puree, start making a really nice uh, liquid and then I'm going to drop in that beef stock cube and I'm going to try and mix that. Now I didn't do a very good job of mixing it so make sure that the stock cube fully dissolves otherwise you're going to have to dissolve it a second time. So let's prepare uh, the veg. We've got these mushrooms so you can slice these any way you want okay and then it's your onion. You essentially just want to dice this into small chunks okay you don't want it to be too big so just dice it nice and finally you can do this by you know peeling the onion cutting off the top so it keeps the root and then putting some uh, horizontal slices in and then some verticals and then you can just slide through it and get a really nice fine finish then we need to add the garlic and the way that i always use garlic is by grating it in the microplane because it does just a great job of essentially making a puree now most other graters are just going to grate it so you can have those chunks. This one, it just it does, it just does such a fine job that it's so smooth and you're just going to melt in. That's what we want. So now that we can add the beef and then we've got our stock. And as you can see, my stock cube didn't melt at all. I did such a bad job I had to kind of uh, uh, melt that again. Then we can add in the Worcestershire sauce, which I added, you know, quite a few uh, shakes of that couple of uh, teaspoons of the Dijon mustard. This is gonna give you some really, really good flavor. So we can start mixing it up. So we want it to be all nicely combined. You don't want it, you know, one bit at the top and some at the bottom. Uh, now we want there to be a decent sauce, you know, the gravy, okay? And we can do this uh, by making a corn flour slurry. So get about 75 mils of cold water and put in a teaspoon of corn flour and just mix it until it turns into like essentially like milk <laughs> you know pour that in and then season up your bowl of goodness loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of black pepper and then loads of salt too you just want to you just want to have as much flavor as you can possibly put in this and that's it put the lid on you're going to stick it in to cook. And for me, all slow cooker recipes, I just put this on in the morning and I leave it cooking all day long. You know, my, my recommendation is eight hours minimum. You know, you, you want you want those flavors to develop. And the longer you put it on, the better. Okay, it's cooking slowly, right? So now we can add this sour cream. Okay, so you're going to want uh, one to two heaped uh, tablespoons of stuff. But you don't want to put too much. You don't want to go too crazy. Uh, it all depends on how big your slow cooker is, obviously, and how much meat you're actually cooking, of course. Um, um, but, you know, I had the 500 grams of meat, and you, you want about two tablespoons of it, because otherwise it will go too sour. Okay, you want that nice mix. You want all the flavors to still be there. Once you've mixed it in, give it a taste. Give it a taste and decide if it needs more seasoning. Okay. 
this is an important lesson in lots of cooking. Give it a taste. If you think it needs a little bit more seasoning, follow your taste buds. If it needs more, add some more. And obviously, don't forget to add that chopped up parsley to give it a nice little fresh taste at the end. Mix it all through and it's going to be ready for serving. Look at that. Creamy, thick, meaty, everything. Hi guys, welcome back to the taste test. Today's cook was a slow cooker version of beef stroganoff. Now it's that time of the year where it's getting chilly and you want these hearty dishes that are packed full of flavor. And this is one of them. This is one of my absolute favorites for the winter because it ticks all the boxes. Now, as I say, this is a slow cooker version. So you're able to put everything in the one pot this is what th this is the type of slow cooker recipes that i like where you can stick everything in one pot and just let it do its magic okay when you've got to do half the work in frying pan all that sort of stuff first it kind of takes away from you know the beauty of the slow cooker so sticking everything in it Getting it done is absolutely great. Now, I know that there are stroganoff recipes that you can cook really, really quickly. It, you know, you're able to make a stroganoff in you know, maybe under half an hour if you want. But as I say, this is all about the slow cooker. Okay, I love using the slow cooker. What it does to me is absolutely incredible. You know it's going to be good. It's really difficult to mess up a slow cooker recipe. And this one we can serve with pretty much anything that you like. Rice or pasta are often favourites. But for me, any type of stew, you really can't go wrong with mashed potatoes. Sweet potato, regular mash. Regular mash is my preferred on this. So, or even some bread. And that's what I think I might uh, dish up when we dish this up. Go for some mash and some bread on the side. So... Let's just have a little cheeky taste test, as it is the taste test, before we say goodbye. And remember uh, to uh, hit the uh, like button, hit the like button, hit the like button, and you know all the other stuff that we usually say. You'll have seen it, but there it is. Beefy, beautiful creamy goodness this is this just i know this is incredible i know this is incredible the fact that i've actually really tasted it obviously because a little bit of seasoning at the end to make sure it was absolutely perfect but we'll go for a big big spoonful absolutely beautiful i highly recommend this what I would say is when you're finishing it up and you're doing the finale, you're putting the sour cream, put a little bit at a time. Don't go too wild. You don't want it to go too sour. You know, you want just enough. You want it to be nice and thick. You want it to retain all of that depth of flavor that you've built up for all those ingredients and all of that time. So I'm going to go prepare this for the evening meal and I'll see you soon. Take it easy.